Well hi guys and girls, Emma again, welcome back to the spare room. This is a project that I thought about about 12 months ago, 18 months ago, and sort of nothing much happened. I cut out a piece of stock at some point and thought that that was pretty hard work. And sort of got a bit inspired today to do a bit on the mill and get it going after spending some money in in the USA on hold down gear. But this shape it comes with this English type clapper box. It's just got a square hole in there for a tool and it's pretty good for a lot of flat surfaces. It really is. It's a nice fit and it works. It's got a bit of weight in it. It's a pretty good thing. However, a lantern style would probably be better because this is no good at all for putting keyways in wheels or, or in pulleys. And there's a few things that this doesn't do. One is that it doesn't give you enough clearance under here to put a decent tool holder in. Um, and it doesn't give you any any allowance to, to turn the, the tool on its side to cut down the side of a face or, or down the other side of a face uh, or to cut a, say, a dovetail. So it's a bit limited. So today I've got a piece of cast iron bar, I had a piece of 80mm round cast iron bar and I chopped it in half about 12 months ago and they're the bits that are left and they'll be useful for something. But it's over in the mill. Now I wanted to make a start on this. I've got the inside mic out and I measured this space here. There's about one thou over inch and three quarter that space in there wherever you measure it. And that sounds like probably what it should be. This is my Lufkin Rulco inside mic. Really pretty piece of gear. It's got a handle and it's got a proper spanner and it's got all the spaces and bits. It's all there and it's got the instructions. And it's in a in a nice Lufkin rule code box. So that come from Keith Fenner. Um, what's in your box? Whoever passed that along, it's a really nice thing to have. This depth micrometer is the other thing we'll need, and that's good old Pratt. So that dates that a bit. But this is a really beautiful tool. I like this too. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to set the mill up for the final cut to get this this thickness here and have a bit of a look and see what we got. Now one of the many problems with this mill so far and why you haven't seen a lot of work on it in video is that there's not enough light over here for most times of the day that I'm ever actually making something. And there's no proper camera mount. We're going to live with this. I've just got a clamp and a ball mount on the, the side of the bench. The other issue with this mill is it's still running much too fast. It's still running about 90 RPM. This is a little two and a half inch cutter and it's still much too fast for that even. So if you put a three or four inch cutter in it, it's, it's just got too much speed. I'm not sure why it's made like that, but it's much too fast. At some point a 960 RPM three phase motor will go on it and a VFD and that will sort all those problems out. Now, I'm filthy dirty and black from machining all this cast iron. You've got to remember with a depth mic this is back to front. I'm going to check this a couple of times and cut it once. And I'm going to leave it a couple of thou too, too high, I hope. And that way I can either scrape it in or I can just give it a rub on a bit of wet and dry, which is more likely what's going to happen. 
and I believe that's about 32 thou over inch and three quarter so 31 thou we really want to take off it say 30 thou would be nice that gives us a couple of thou just to clean up I've got this set up here because we don't have any actual actual calibration or measurement on the, the z-axis on this so if we loosen that off I think we need to go about 30 thou that's 10 20 I'm reluctant to to go too close to the mark because I don't really understand this machine as well as I should yet and I'm reluctant to go too far away because I don't want to spend two days cleaning up one side both sides so that it fits in and inadvertently getting it twisted or or out of parallel so that's 30 thou we're going to call that now we'll lock that cable up and we'll take this off out of the way. And hopefully, and take a cut off the outside here. And hopefully, when we measure it again, it's going to be somewhere near. So. Power feed would be amazing on this because it's very hard to regulate by hand and it does tend to catch if you go just that tiny bit too fast. So at some point, that's going to be an option. Myford Boy's got a really good series at the moment on that. We're about a thou over, so I'm going to call that done. Let's finish this off and have a look at it over on the bench. So there's our block of stuff. That's a pretty good fit in there. There's no rock in it. Um, you won't even get like you won't get anything down between it. Really pleased with that. It still needs a fair bit off the outside. The idea is to have a raised square in the middle here with a hole in it, but it only wants to be about, because space is limited on this machine, so it only wants to, the recess around the outside wants to be about level with, with the rest of that clapper box. Um, this will need a radius on the top, 
probably this will get rounded off round here and have a hole board in here and it's got a hole for a tapered pin through the middle there and I've got a tapered pin there, reamer there to do it so this needs to come down to about probably eighth of an inch proud of, of that dimension and that's another job for the depth mic we'll just change that anvil back make sure everything's nice and clean that's about 700 about 720 something like that I think if we made this 750 plus 8 is 7 eighths of an inch 875 something like that down here that's going to need what how much is that going to need off it something like a fair bit still going to need a fair bit off it so a bit of work in that I'm not going to do it tonight but at some point soon I'm going to take this down here to the right dimension and then I'm going to set up this hole on the back set this up in the forge drawer and bore it and put a recess in it for the for the um, the tool post so it doesn't pull through that's sort of the, the next job that still needs a lot off it we'll have to set that up on some parallels and we've probably got to find some parallels because this mill isn't real well equipped So there we go, we're down to size. That's three quarters of an inch thick, or it's actually seven eighths of an inch thick. Um, it's exactly the right width this way, and it's about the right length, I think, at this stage. It could do with a little bit off the top if we've got to. But apart from that, everything looks really good. I've marked this out. What I want to do is put a raised square on this side. Uh, just as a checkerboard to, to mount the tool against and this needs to come down to three quarters so it needs an eighth of an inch off all the way around what I'm going to do is set up the height gauge an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half from each side will give us a quarter of an inch on each side it gives us an inch and a quarter square in the middle um, or a bit more this way I think so we want to be quarter of an inch from the bottom and quarter of an inch from each side and probably inch and three quarter something like that from the top and then we'll clean the bottom out with a cutter I've had a bit of a look around and I've found this which has got a round side, round radius on it this might be really good for the job um, just to, to clean that up with a nice corner actually way behind on this because I thought I had today off but obviously that that wasn't an option you know, I had to go into work so I haven't done much I sort of did some drawings for this but they kind of not a hundred percent sure they were they were particularly good and designs change so what I've done is marked out a square there it's going to be a raised portion I'm going to take the rest down to three quarter over on the mill um, I'm just going to run down that side and measure that distance there and then run down the other side and measure the distance in the middle turn it half a turn and run down that side and run down this side and till it cleans up 
once I've got my height, my depth set, because that cutter I think will take eighth of an inch out of cast iron, no worries at all. Uh, once I've got my depth set, I'm just going to run around it and have a look. We might just round these corners off, see how that looks. Now, a friend just pointed out that I didn't sort of film this. I've just set this up and I've used my new solid rock boring bar. Another video about that soon. But I've bored this out here with a recess. It's plenty big enough and that's a 7 8 hole through there. So that's what size the lantern's going to be. I'm pretty pleased about that. It seems to all look pretty good. I'll give you some idea how it's going to look over here. I'm really pleased how that's coming together. We've still got to round over the top and put this hole through here for the roll pin, for the tapered pin. Next job I think is to put some serrations on here. Um, the diamond pattern. I really have to have a think about this and I'm not going to do it tonight. But I will set it up with a with a V groove tool in the in the shaper and we'll space these and Put some nice, say one one eighth or one twenty five thousand three mil something like that serrations through here, um, spaced one there, one there, one there, and the same here. I think I'm probably going to do a diamond pattern, or I'd intended to do a diamond pattern when this was going to be square, but I'm going to have to have a bit of a look because this is an oblong now and we could either do like a 60 degree across the corner is probably a nice way to do it. Still thinking about that so I'm going to call it a night tonight and probably tomorrow night, uh, no weekend this weekend sorry, I'm going to put these in and start cleaning this up by hand a bit and start thinking about putting this hole in here. So next job is to put the checkerboard on and these are 250th hour part. That's a quarter of an inch. That adds up to nice even, I hope. Nice even divisions both ways. I'm just going to go square with that. Uh, I've put three in there and I've set the DTI up here. Um, and I'm just going to advance 250 on here. 100. 250 and check against that scribe line but that looks pretty good if there's some finish issues I'm just going to clean them out with a triangle file when we're done but that's one way gone so that's that surface, looks pretty good, I'm really pleased with that. Um, bigger shapers of course had this screwed on in a hard plate and that's really kind of nice but it's not going to happen for this and it's just something else to work loose so that's what I've done. Next job, this needs a tapered pin or tapered hole in here to go in there. This, this has a tapered pin that goes through here in the right spot um, to hold this in place. This is the pin out of the machine. This needs a number 6 reamer. I'm not sure if I've got one. Number 6 imperial reamer to run through there. Um, and this is going to need rounding off here. So probably... Rounding it off is pretty straightforward. All I'm going to do is mark a radius and cut down to the line all the way along and finish it with a file. That's that's pretty easy. It won't take much doing. It's a bit of handwork, but that never ever hurt anyone. And then it's going to need a good clean up here and all the file marks taken out of it. But I'm going to leave this side and this side and this side machined. We need to work out where this hole goes. And there's no real easy way to do that because it's a tapered hole. 
what I'm probably going to do is blue that up and put it in there and mark it with a scriber and find the center of that hole. I think that's probably the best way to get it because it's not quite on center of the block and it's a very difficult thing to, to measure. So using the Randy Richard scriber we're going to mark our circle on there and find the center of it. And from there we need to drill this through nice and parallel and straight. The minimum size of the, the reamer. And hopefully at the same setup run the reamer through until it fits the clapper box and so that the, the tapered pin fits in the right spot so that it's tight in the box as well as in the clapper. So that's the next job really is to sort that out. So there we go, I've got that set up in the in the four-jaw chuck. It's not that far out of balance actually, it feels pretty good. I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, I really don't think there'll be issue drilling that nice and parallel through there. I can't find however my number six tapered pin reamer. No idea where it is. It's got to be here somewhere and whether I just order another one or whether I find a second hand one somewhere or whether I keep looking for it and hope it shows up or whether I borrow one off someone I'm not really sure yet so until that happens I'm going to leave this set up here um, check it again before I do it drill it and ream it and start thinking about start thinking about other projects for a little while part two of this won't be that far away there's not much to do I've got to make a a lantern for it to go in and a washer and a bolt to hold it all tight on the tool and round this over and bore it and ream it so not a big job there are other things I can do in the meantime but thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff be kind to each other and more soon guys and girls